Hey, y'all. There you go. There's that y'all again. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm from the South. We just say that, okay? My name is Tracy. For any of you that's new here to our channel, uh, my name is Tracy. I'm the keeper of the home here at 40 Farms. And um, thank you for checking out our channel. Thank you for uh, clicking on this video to watch it. Um, um, like I said, my name is Tracy. Um, this video, I wanted to do one about um, anybody who's interested in um, starting to sew. If you think you you want to start sewing just for a hobby, um, just for enjoyment, if you've got grandchildren, or uh, some of these, um, I admire these little old women that... Um, uh, so for some little girls and, and boys and things overseas, I don't know the name of the program, uh, but they get together and they sew these little dresses for girls and send them overseas to other countries and um, just something to do with their time. They're retired. They want something to do and they, they've been sewing all these years for their own family and they still use their sewing skills to help other people. Um, I sew because, well, I'll just, I'll just take you back on my journey. I grew up with my grandmother and my mama making a lot of our clothes, 75% of our clothes, especially when we were little, little dresses and the little ruffle bottom um, diaper covers and, you know, things like that, little bloomers, bloomers. Okay, so, oh, I'd give anything to have some of those old patterns that my grandmother used. And I can vividly remember some of the little dresses that I used to wear and the little ruffle bottom bloomers. Um, I, I remember in particular this one dress and, and what was on the material. I think it turned out to be one of my favorite dresses. And I can just see it just as plain as day. And I wished I had some of their old vintage patterns. I would love to start finding some vintage patterns is what I would like to do. But if you think, I don't care what age you are. I don't care if you are a child. Um, I don't care if you're a teenager. I don't care if you are... Um, Sorry, had an itch. <laughs> we have an itch every once in a while. Scratch it. Um, or you're a, a young lady that has small children. Or you're an older woman and just want to do something for the good of the community and help other people, like I said before. But you, you want to start sewing, but you just don't know where to start. And you don't know what to buy. And you don't know, you know, who to look to, uh, where to go. This this video is not a sit down and sew an outfit with me tutorial. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> it's just not going to be because I have a bunch of seam rippers, okay? I have more than one seam ripper. So that lets you know that sometimes I make a lot of mistakes <laughs> and I have to rip them suckers out, okay? So, and I have to start over, okay? So, I, um... Yeah, I, I have a lot. <laughs> so, this is not a tutorial about I'm going to sew this outfit. I do have an, uh, a project on under the machine right now. I do have one. Uh, and I got to get it finished for my little granddaughters because school's fixing to start. So, I'm kind of like in a rush, okay? So, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to share, um, like, what prompted me to get started, how I got started, how I got help. Y'all... When I started sewing 20, it was two years before our oldest son was born, and he's fixing to turn 25, so 27 years ago, I decided I wanted to start learning how to sew. I'm like, I remember my grandmother and my mama sewed, I think I want to start sewing, and for myself, it was just me. I wasn't pregnant yet with our oldest son. My husband got me my two sewing machines um, two years before our son was born. And I wanted to do something for myself. And I'm like, I want to try to fix me a dress. I want to try to make me a skirt. I want to try to do this, you know. So I'm like, okay. All right, but one thing to do, and that's just to get started. So I told my husband what I wanted. And for Christmas one year, he got me my own serger and a single needle sewing machine. 
Now, the one I'm showing you today is not the, the single needle is not the one he bought me because I have it actually at home um, put up because I upgraded and I wanted a sewing machine and embroidery machine in one. I wanted to kind of start dabbling in um, um, embroidery, starting out small, okay? Don't, don't overwhelm me with this big 10 thread or 8 thread embroidery machine. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Learning new things and electronics kind of intimidates me. So, um, for Christmas one year, he surprised me and got me my own serger. A serger is um, a three thread or a four thread. Um, there's a difference between the sergers. There's an overlock and there is a um, cover stitch. Mine is not a cover stitch. I can't serge and hem at the same time, okay? Mine is an overlock excuse me, which means there's four threads uh, that's going to overlap, like this is your, this is your material, this is like the top and the bottom, okay, it overlaps your, your material as you sew, okay, it overlaps your material, and it creates a um, finish where your fabric doesn't start unraveling, okay, um, and coming unthreaded, um, uh, you know what I'm talking about, like jeans, you know how they come unraveled, you know, okay, so that's what a serger is, and you can either get a three thread or a four thread, mine's a four thread, now over the years they've upgraded and they've probably got more, okay, um, I like a serger to finish seams with, your, your clean seams, you know, like starting here, going down side seams, I like a clean finish. I can slap a side seam together, a front and a back together, uh, attach a bodice to a bottom. Um, I like to, to use my serger to set my sleeves in, believe it or not. I like that clean finish. I don't, um, I don't have anything that, maybe you can see it right here. See that? I'm going to show y'all right quick. See that right there? That is a clean finish across there. So you can't see down my shirt. <laughs> that is a clean finish right across the top up there. Okay? And it, it keeps your material from coming unraveled. And on your seams, y'all, I can't unclothe in front of you. But anyway, it creates a um, nice finish to where your garments doesn't come unraveled. Okay? Side seams. Um, you know, up under the arms, things like that. Your sleeves going down this way, okay? Uh, setting in your sleeves this way. You know, you see the you see the threads kind of looping. Um, fronts to backs. Um, different things like that. I like the finished seams, okay? And it makes it look cleaner and it's faster, y'all, than... Now, if you don't have a serger... You can do the same concept, like an overlapping on your single needle. Just do like a um, zigzag stitch on the edge of your fabric, and then go along to the left side of it and do a single needle stitch. There you go. I learned that over the years, y'all. Y'all, 27 years I've been sewing, and I'm still learning some tips and tricks. We didn't have YouTube, y'all. We didn't have Pinterest. Mama! <laughs> Mama! Mama, how do you do this? Mama. Now, my mama and my grandmother, they didn't have sergers. They didn't, they weren't back then, okay? They didn't have sergers. You did everything on your single needle, okay? And you learned tips and tricks, okay? And they did like the single needle. And then they took their seams and they pressed them open and things like that. You know, they it was the harder way. Then sergers came on the market. Made things a little easier. Industries came up with them first. Manufacturers. I used to work in a um, clothing factory. And that's how I learned. I started out in a clothing factory. And uh, to where I was like, I'm going to get familiar with machines. And I'm going to get familiar how to do this. So I took what I learned in a factory and took it home. And I'm like, hmm, I want me a serger. 
okay? I've done garments and I worked in an upholstery factory. Whew. Let me tell y'all something. If you hadn't worked in an upholstery factory where you're having to whip out and you're having to make production and meet production so many items per hour, whew, you ain't worked. I'm sorry, yes you have, yes you have. But I worked in an upholstery factory and mm, it wasn't easy. Some of those pieces of, of material were bigger than I was, okay? And leather, leather about broke me, okay? Anyway, so um, he, he got me, let's get back on track, I'm chasing rabbits, he got me my machines. And then I decided, I'm like, okay, I, I wanna kinda like, I, I got started and I'm like, you know, Mama, I need you to come teach me some things. I want you to teach me how to read a pattern. Um, still, some things I don't understand on the pattern simply because the way they got it worded. <sighs> Mama! <laughs> okay? So, I'm like, and my sister sews. My sister does more quilts. And, um, but she's she's has sewn some outfits. And I'm like, if I had any trouble, I, I knew I could call them. So, my mama worked with me and started teaching me the basics. Then after that, y'all, I just basically started teaching myself and just practicing and learning. But like I said, we didn't have YouTube and we didn't have Pinterest. So, I couldn't just Google, okay? We didn't even have cell phones, okay? So, I couldn't Google all this stuff. Didn't have internet. So, I'm like, hmm, let's see what we can do. Yeah, we did have internet. Yeah, we did. But I didn't have it. I didn't know how to use it. Didn't have a computer. Didn't know how to use it. So, I'm like, you know, mama. So, I'm going to tell you some things like how you can get started. Um, if you don't have a grandmother or a mother still living that can teach you or friends or anything that sews, um, sometimes libraries will have like some adult classes and they might they might have some sewing classes uh your local county extension office offers adult classes anywhere that your county offers adult classes go for it okay sign up for those classes um who else a home ec teacher at your local high school um Somebody in your church, somebody in your community that you might can just say, hey, can we barter? Can you teach me how to sew if I teach you something, teach you how to do something? Or can I pay you to teach me? Okay, find somebody. YouTube. Y'all get, get to have YouTube. I didn't. Okay? Get on YouTube for beginners. Okay? Um, I'm going to share with y'all some of the things that I have and some of the things that I use and uh, notions that I use. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. <coughs> um, notions that I use, my machines, my bags, my, my carriers. Um, what else can I share with you? Just, just some basics right now in this video, okay? Uh, my next video, um, I share... Um, like your patterns, how to pick a pattern, how to pick your fabrics, how to read a pattern, what I know how to read a pattern, okay? Um, picking out your fabrics, suggested notions and things like that, and then how to trace off a um, pattern piece uh, of the size that you need at that moment without cutting off all the extra pieces on a multiple size pattern. Uh, that'll be part two. And then, um, so let's just get started here. I'm going to put my glasses on first of all. I'm going to turn this light on because I had it turned off because it was glaring on my glasses. So I'm going to turn this light on right here. Oh, and then I'm going to turn y'all around. There we go. Uh, I'm going to turn y'all around and I'm going to show y'all what I have and then how I got started. So let's turn this thing around. Oh, all right. There we are. This is my serger that I have had. This is my caddy. I will show y'all that in just a second and things that I have in there. This is my serger I've had for 27 years. And it is a, let's see, where is that at? It is a Mylock 134D differential feed. This is my manual. I still have my manual because I refer back to this. Because I'm going to tell y'all something. I've had this thing 27 years, and I just now learn how to gather on my serger and do a rolled hem. And I've had this thing 27 years, and I never bothered to just get it out and play with it. But So I refer back to this manual a lot, and I've made notes in here. Or it may be in a notebook. Uh, if you don't, first thing, let me tell. 
first thing, let me tell you, look into your machines. Find out. Let me get you so where I'm not glaring off the... Am I glaring? I'm glaring. Okay, anyway. Find a machine that you like. Don't get intimidated by them. Find one in your price range, one that you want. All the bells and whistles because the more that you get on it, the more you get to play with it. Um... Like my first single needle sewing machine, it had a few decorative stitches on it. It was just a single needle. It wasn't computerized. It didn't have all the bells and whistles, but it worked for me at the moment, okay, just to get started. You can upgrade later if you want to, but if you have the finances and the budget, get one with the bells and whistles on it. Get one with the the computer on it that you can plug it up to your computer um, and download some stuff onto your machine. Get something within your price range. You don't have to go overboard and be fancy, okay? You can find a single needle that you can do a lot of different things with. You don't have to have a serger. Like I said, you can do the zigzag stitch and then to the left of it, run you a couple of stitches beside it and you've got like a serger. So you don't really have to have both, okay? There's so many things that you can do just with a single needle, okay? So don't think that you've got to go out here and just buy all this stuff because you don't, okay? So just start out small if you want to. If you're intimidated, start out small, upgrade, learn, upgrade later. That's all. So getting you back to my serger, okay? This is my serger. It's got four threads. Four threads. Oop, I'm getting my, my thin tangled up okay so i learned how to gather on it i learned how to um uh do a rolled hem you know different things like that and i, I mean i should have learned this a long time ago okay it's four threads now this is my so i have a project see under the needle granddaughter's clothes i had to go to hobby lobby yesterday because i ran out of trim on these shorts so i gotta finish these i'm not gonna let i'm not gonna tell you what i'm doing right now for my granddaughter uh my husband's stuff back here y'all i'm sorry spit cups all such as that that's not mine i promise um let's see now this is my single needle slash embroidery machine my other single needle, like I said, is packed up right now, saving it for granddaughters because I'm going to teach them how to start sewing on it. So I'm saving that one for them. But about five years ago, I upgraded to this one because I wanted a computerized one. And then I wanted um, an embroidery machine. So this one is a Brother Project Runaway Limited Edition LB6800. Now, the only thing I'm sad about this one with it being a limited edition is it's hard to find accessories for it right now because it is a limited edition. They only made so many of these. And so, you know, I'll have to see what I can do about finding some more parts for it. Uh, this is the embroidery station on it. It go, you take this off and this goes hooked onto this and this is the hoop for it. I don't have it set up right now because I'm not doing anything embroidery. This is the hoop for it. It's a four by six. Mine is going to, this one sews four by four. I think I can get up to a four by six on it. Um, I don't know. I'm still learning how to, um, hook. Let's see. I, this is a quick reference guide. I, this is my guide for it. A quick reference. I have like, there's my owner's manual. Ugh. No, this is my big owner's manual right here. That's my owner's manual showing me everything. Y'all sit down when you buy a sewing machine. Please sit down and read your owner's manual first and familiarize yourself with how it functions, okay? How to thread it, its features, troubleshooting, maintenance, everything. This is a quick start embroidery guide. I've got patterns in here, see? All these different embroidery patterns. And then how to set it up for embroidery, how to attach the, the thing. Y'all, please go through your owner's manuals first, okay? And I think this one does four by uh, four or four by six. I'll have to look and see. And it tells me how to switch my threads. Now, one thing I do have to learn is mine is compatible. I can, it come with its own decorative stitches, okay? I don't have it plugged in right now. Um, let me see, let me plug this in, y'all. Ouch. 
I don't mean to make y'all dizzy. Let me see. Let me plug this in back here right quick. All right, here we go. Now let's see. If I want to do embroidering, where do I go? Whoop, right there. Is that the one? Yes. So see, I have my pattern. You switch it over to embroidery. I can pick my pattern. I can go fonts. I can do borders, position it, everything. Now right here, mine is capable of being hooked up to my computer, USB, and I can find some different, um, uh, embroidery designs on the internet and download this. See, I still got to learn all that. There's a lot I still have to learn, y'all, uh, concerning my embroidery machine. I'm just now getting unintimidated by it and trying to teach myself how to use it. So I've still got to learn how to um, work all this and um, I can do, right now I can do simple embroidering where I don't have to change the thread. Changing the thread is something else I've got to learn because there's some designs in here I wanna do for my granddaughters. And there's like, oh, multiple colors. And learning how in the middle of a design and it tells you to change the thread. Yeah, that's intimidating to me. I gotta learn how to do that. Where did my patterns go? Oh, back here. Yeah, see all them patterns? I see there was one I wanted to do that's got like that one right there. Oh, y'all, that many colors. Eight different colors, changing the thread eight different times. I gotta learn how to do all this, y'all. And I've gotta learn how to, when you find something on the computer, see, I, I need to take a lesson in this. I wanna find somebody that can teach me all this. When you find like a design on a website that you like, and then you download it to your computer, you got to change like to a zipped file. I don't know. Y'all, I got to learn. Uh, and somehow you got to open that up. And see, I don't know everything yet. I'm still learning. And then um, transferring it, uploading it, downloading it, whatever, to your embroidery machine. So see, there's still things I've got to learn on my sewing machine and my embroidery machine. Um, I'm going to turn it off for right now because I'm... Uh, where my button go? There we go. Okay. So when you pick out the kind of sewing machine that you want, or you're looking for a sewing machine, start out small. If you have to learn, take classes, get somebody to help you upgrade later, just like I did. Now, once I get into embroidery more and I learn more and I want to get into it more, I might go to just a bigger embroidery machine. Um, I can't really see myself getting that big. I, I, I don't, not right now anyway. Okay, so I had to teach myself how to do this. I'm still learning. Thank you, YouTube. Thank you, YouTube. Okay, I'm still learning some things, okay? And uh, I've had a few people work with me and teach me some things on it. Like I said, I just learned how to gather and do a rolled hem, rolled hem on my serger. And I've had that thing for 27 years. Okay go figure. All right, now I want to show y'all what is, let's say, oh, the bags that it come with. One of them came with a carrying case. One of them didn't. This is my, my single needle sewing machine, my Project Runaway embroidery machine. It came with its own case, and I take this sucker with me everywhere I go. If I'm traveling, my, and I'm going to be gone for an extended stay, my sewing stuff goes with me, so I'll have something to do, and I don't get bored. This is my serger uh, case. It didn't come with my serger. I bought it at Walmart. Okay. And it has all these pockets. It has pockets. <laughs> it has all these compartments, all these pockets, zippers, things like that. And see, I put my thread. Well, it just went backwards. I, I got my thread in here. It's a little, it's on wheels, carrying case, got my thread. There's my serger sits down in there. I can put a few things onto the side and it has pockets. Okay, this is some accessories that I have. I'm gonna take these over here if I don't drop them and I'm gonna show y'all all these. Okay, there's my little bobbin box I bought to store all my bobbins so that way I can just pick a color and switch out in a, in a quick sewing scenario. This, oh Lord, what's in here? 
this is a lot of my sewing machine accessories and snap accessories my wire pliers there's my rolled hem plate for my serger all of my there's different feet for my sewing machine there's my embroidery foot that attaches to my sewing machine there's extra feet in here that came with my sewing machines your sewing machine will come with some extra feet and some accessories um it'll give you the option of having some more of these this is a shorter spool this is the holder for the thread spool um then you'll have like one of these that's a button hole attachment um uh, let's see i have notes in here y'all uh let's see there, let's see that's for my older machine this is for my new machine buttonhole um uh, attachment uh let's say i have more accessories that this is for like for my wire pliers maintenance um your machine will come with some maintenance tools little screwdrivers um these are things I use to make hair bows with to use for clamping and stuff like that. My serger, y'all, I just went and bought some makeup brush it, brush it, brushes to keep my serger clean. When you're sewing, let me show you this. When you're serging something, you have threads and stuff and fuzz that gets caught in there, okay? See down in there, it gets caught. It's time to clean mine. I use brushes and stuff, and sometimes a little bitty head on a vacuum cleaner, um, different things like that. And I use these makeup brushes to help clean. Uh, it's gonna come with some oil. Um, my oil's in another bag. It's gonna come, it may be in my other bag over here. My, yeah, this is a little snap attachment. I love this to do uh kids shirts button up shirts you can tell it's very worn <laughs> right there on the end you can tell it's worn um i love putting snaps on on shirts until they learn how to button uh let's see that's that is there anything up under there nope just some notes i put notes in here too y'all uh let's see where is my notions i tell you what let me get my notions out over here and this is the 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 bleh, majority of where the rest of my stuff is. Let me move some of this stuff out of my way, y'all. I'm I'm all spread out here doing a project. So this is a caddy that I bought at a thrift store. Yes, look at that caddy. It's like a craft caddy. And I'm like, you know what? I think I only paid three dollars for it. And I'm like, that is perfect for my sewing stuff. See, it has pockets. <laughs> And a little drawer in the front. It has pockets, y'all. Look at that. So much pockets. Look at that. You just spin that baby around and it has so many pockets. So, some basic essentials that you're going to need. I really need to put my phone down so I can show y'all this. Um, where can I put my... I tell you what, we're going to go back over here. And I'm going to put my phone down. I'm going to move my sewing machines out of the way. Uh, okay, I'm going to try to, let me turn y'all around right here. All right, I'm going to turn y'all around. I'm going to set y'all down here to where maybe y'all can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to show y'all some different notions that I have in here that you're probably going to need to get started with, okay? First and foremost, where is it at? Fabric scissors. If anybody gets a hold of your fabric scissors and uses them for something else besides fabric. I'll just leave that to your imagination. Don't use my fabric scissors for anything else. Put a lock on these babies. Y'all, a good set of fabric scissors, I think I paid 30 bucks for these, and I hide these babies. I hide them. Don't get into my fabric scissors. That's what these little scissors are for. I'm going to poke my eye out in a minute. That's what these scissors are for, okay? Get you some little cheaper scissors to use for paper and patterns, cutting out patterns and stuff like that. Get you some cheaper scissors, okay? Do not touch my fabric scissors, okay? That's first and foremost. Scissors. Get you some little bitty ones like this. 
kindergarten scissors, y'all, to do like getting in little tight spaces, embroidery stitches. Oh, I do have one. I do have a little pair of these little embroidery scissors. I have several pair of embroidery scissors. Yeah, little snips to cut. For, where is my embroidery scissors? I just bought some from a lady. I have snips. I use these in a factory, y'all, all the time. We had them sturdy silver ones. Where is, oh, that's not open. Um, where is my little embroidery scissors? Oh, come on, I gotta find them. Oh, here they are, I think they're on this side. Yes, 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 yes. What I like about these embroidery scissors, y'all, let me put all this other stuff down. You see how it's going down at an angle and coming straight out? That is so you can get up on your embroidery plate around your stitches and snip those stitches that needs to be stick, snip, snip, whatever, cut, okay? So that's what that's why they're slanting, okay? So these are my embroidery scissors. I don't use these for nothing else except for when I'm embroidering, and I hide them over here, okay? But all these other little scissors I use for things like that, okay? Other small spaces, kindergarten scissors, a dollar, y'all. And then something to just cut paper and patterns, okay? So, where am I? Get that out of my way. All right, let's see. So, let's put my scissors back up. Let's go back here. Y'all, I have a place for everything. I'm organized. Don't touch my stuff either. I'm organized. All right, I'm going to put... <laughs> I'm on, yeah. All right, I'll find a place for these in a bit, just a minute. See, I have more scissors. I have these crazy kind of ones, like going straight. See that right there? Going straight down this way. You know, it just it all depends on your preference, how you want to hold your scissors, okay? I have rotary cutters. I also like these, too. I need to go get me some more blades. Be careful with these because you can cut yourself. See that blade sticking out, okay? You have to keep them sharpened. And it pops back in. I need to go get some more of these. Or I just need a blade sharpener. They sell those. Hobby Lobby places like that. I love cutting fabric with these too. Or quick projects. Alright. So we're going to put those back. It's closed. It's not going to hurt me. Okay. We're going to put them right back in there. That's not where they go. But okay. So scissors is your number one thing. And you can... Get you a set of fabric scissors, spend that extra money, but you better put a lock on them things. Okay, next thing you're gonna need is, I like my little pen holder. See, oop, I think I just lost a pen in there. Pen holder, I like my little pen cushion, or you can put them in a little bowl. I got safety pins in here. You can put your safety pins, I mean, your pins in anything you want to. I just like when I get done unpinning a project and I, I'm, I'm under the needle or something, I can just, boop, stick it right back in there instead of let, laying it on the table and losing it. Or you can put it in a bowl. Or they have the little magnetic holders that, um, like, like if you do drop one in the floor, drop a pin in the floor, you can run that magnet, magnet over the floor and it'll pick it up. It'll find it. Uh, let's see. Tape measure. I've got two tape measures in here. I've got this one and then I have a long one. Yeah. Whoop. <laughs> I have a long one in here. So I've got two, um, for long measurements. And then this one is more like for a kid. Okay. So I have long measurements. Uh, let's see. I love these. that They sell quilt clips or hem clips at Hobby Lobby. But y'all, Dollar Tree, these little binder clips works fine too. Shh. That's my little secret. <laughs> okay, a dollar. And I got all these little clips. A dollar. And I got this little case. And I put clips on there. Y'all, sewing doesn't have to be expensive. Uh, let's see. That's just like I got tape in here for like taping up uh, my thread when I get done with it so it doesn't come unravel. Uh, let's see. Put all this stuff back in here. Oh, what else is in here? Let's go to the back side. This, I love this stuff. I discovered this stuff. This is, like, I gotta sit down, y'all. Oh, let me grab my tear. Oh, mm. I love this stuff right here. Let me get y'all up to where y'all can see both of us. Oh, I got me a new tripod, y'all, and I think it's going crazy. I should have just stuck with my other one. Okay, I like this stuff. This is like a sticky tape, and 
the other day I was in embellishing some t-shirts for my granddaughters. I'm glaring y'all. I'll take these off a minute. Ooh, can't see now. And I, I had a little piece of ribbon that I was sewing on to a piece of fabric and it just kept moving on me, but it was too small and my hands was just, <sighs> this stuff. It's a sticky back tape. I'm just going to peel some off here for you right quick. I can't see now, y'all. <laughs> it's a sticky back tape. It's a sticky, gut, sticky, I can't talk either. Sticky back tape, y'all. I can't see to even unravel it so I can show you. Anyway, you, you put this on your project. You stick it on there, all right? Then you go back and you peel off the white tape and then whatever you need, a hemming. Sometimes this will hold a hem in place until to keep it from rolling as you so and sliding as you use it. It'll keep your hem in place till you can get it hemmed down, like a temporary bond kinda. But I think there is one that a heat bond that you can use if you don't want to stitch it. They use these in crafts too. Okay, so I love that. Do I got anything in this pocket? See, I got pockets everywhere, y'all. Three dollars. I got this from a thrift store. Okay, I'm just gonna go around my thing. Ruler. Uh, what do I use this for? I use this and I use hem gauges. Okay, hems. Like if you're hemming something and you wanna take a one inch hem, you can go all the way around and run this all around your hem line at one inch to where you know you got it right. Okay, I got ruler, I got two of those. And y'all, there's something else. I think it's in this one. Oop, where'd it go? Ah, I moved it. It was in there. If I find it again, I'll show it to you. It's another little hem gauge. I'm gonna knock myself in the hand. Where did it go? It's another little hem gauge, and it's a little square one, y'all. What did I do with it? Oh, I hope I haven't dropped it out of here. Okay, if I find it, I'll let you know as I go around. Another hem gauge. Let's go back around this way. Okay, uh, something else. Dressmaking tracing paper. Y'all, I took my glasses off. <laughs> Dressmaker's tracing paper, okay? This is what I use to trace off my patterns if I want different sizes without cutting those extra sizes off on a multiple size pattern. I'll get to that in my next video. That's part two. There's going to be probably two or three parts to this video. It comes with your little wheel, and I demonstrate in one of them how to, uh, in um, part two, how to uh, use this. I've already done part two because I got to that point and I'm like, you know what? This could be a video. This could be some content. Somebody might need to know how to do this. So I started videoing and I'm like, mm, you got to go back and do from the very beginning. So this is part one. Okay. So I've, I demonstrate how to use this. It's got different color paper that you trace off. You lay this down and then you just, I demonstrate it in part number two. Okay. Watch part number two. You want to learn how to use this. Okay. So here's your tracing paper. You need some of that. Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm into bone making, so I picked these up at uh, Hobby Lobby. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm loving the bows, y'all. My granddaughters, I'm loving the bows. YouTube. My playlist is full of bow. And, oh, there's only three. <laughs> my playlist is full of bow making. Mm -hmm. Sewing. Little gathered skirts, y'all. That's, that's another reason why I learned how to gather on my serger. is because I've got some ideas for some skirts coming up. And I'm like, there's got to be an easier way than the old-timey way of pulling that thread through and it breaking halfway through. And you got to start all over again. And I'm like, I'm fixing to learn this. So I did. Uh, I got me a little mat here for little small projects that I don't get somebody's table dirty if I'm traveling. And craft table, a little small one. Um, ah, some more things is in my big box in my truck that I didn't get it out yet. I have like a big quilter's ruler in there that I just bought me. Uh, let's see, what's this? Chalk. I usually use fabric markers. They're washable. When you're marking something on your fabric, you can either use chalk, you can use washable markers, um, or some is like wipe off or air. They can be on there for so long and after so many hours, they'll just 
dissipate, whatever you call it. I don't know. They'll go away. Okay. So you can use anything for marking fat on your fabric. Uh, when you're uh, part three is going to be me cutting out some fabric. I've <clears throat> part two, I, I traced off my my pattern that I needed. Part three, I'm going to show you how I'm going to cut out my fabric for my next project and put all my markings on my pattern. That's part three. Uh, pencils. I got to sharpen that one. Okay, pencils. So let me put these back. You can use any kind of fabric, marking, pencils, whatever you want. Take your pick. I haven't used chalk before, but I think I want to get into it. I think I did. I think I did. Because sometimes I will make something and my my granddaughters or I will want to wear it right then. And I still may have like some markings on it. And I'm like, oops, I forgot that marker right on my shoulder. Okay. So I think I'm going to go with chalk. See, I'm still learning, y'all. Okay, let's see. I'm just going to put things out here. This is my little stylus pen for my computer on my single needle. This, oh, this is a marking pencil. I got to sharpen it. And this one has the little tip on it. Oh, like a little, but that felt funny, like a little brush. And you can scrape the, the chalk mark out of the fabric. Works pretty neat. Uh, let's see. Oh, man, I wish I could find that little square hem gauge. It is in here somewhere. Um, I have, what's here? What's here? Oh, I got some extra pens. Okay. Uh, I've got super glue. I've got craft stuff in here too. What is that? Oh, this is for crochet, I think. This needs to go in my crocheting stuff back home. I, I'm getting into crocheting too, y'all. Self-teaching myself, YouTube, thank you, videos, because my great grandparents y'all i had the opportunity of being raised around my great grandparents too and even my great grandpa crocheted i still have booties little booties on your feet not booty but booties that you wear on your feet okay i still have little booties that they crocheted for all the grandkids and great grandkids okay um i have a little bonnet a little kid's bonnet i have something else and y'all i will never get rid of those things i will never get rid of those things uh someone crocheted dakota our oldest son a blanket went at a baby shower for me and little booties to match i still have that anything y'all that is handcrafted handmade i don't care if it's crocheted or if it's sewed handmade projects y'all are priceless because someone put time, money, effort, and most of all, love behind those items. It takes time. I've, I taught my chef, did I just say a bad word? Chef, no, I didn't, I didn't say a bad word. Uh, I taught myself how to do a single, crochet stitch no I had a friend teach me single crochet stitch and double crochet stitch and to get me started and I just started out with lines okay so far I can do pot holders I can do placemats and I can do a baby blanket I can I did my granddaughter's a baby blanket a piece every grandchild will get a baby blanket from me okay I can do that I can sew straight lines I don't do circles. I don't do, <laughs> I gotta teach myself how to do that. I don't know how to read a crochet pattern. I, that's something else I'm gonna learn how to do. I started three or four years ago, a big Afghan to put on our bed or as a lap Afghan. Um, ooh, I got all the panels made. Now I gotta figure out how to go back and put all the panels, attach the panels. See, I'm self-teaching crochet, too. I, I, I'm learning, okay? But I remember my... And I remember my great-grandmother teaching my grandmother. And I was sitting there watching. And we went home. And we started... I started out crocheting when I was little girl, like seven years old. 
I, I started crocheting and I made me like some little bracelets, friendship bracelets. And y'all, why I ever put that crochet needle down, I don't know. I do not know why I put that needle down, that crochet needle, a hook. I should have just kept on going. And I, I, my grandmother, she did keep on going for a little bit. And I, I don't know why we stopped. I really don't. I would have known how to do a lot of stuff right now. But I'm going to get there. Okay? So what else have I got in here? So let's see. What is this? This is like some kind of cutter I bought a long time ago. It's supposed to do like paper and roll through there, slide through there and cut. I never figured out how to use it. I never could get it to work. I have a pencil sharpener. I need to sharpen those two pencils. Um, cigarette lighter. I don't smoke, y'all, but I use this for ribbons. Sealing the ends of my ribbons I make hair bows with, okay? You need one of those if you make hair bows. What else is down in here? Oh, well, I got surprises. Oh, chalk. You can even use chalk on garments. Just chalk. Dollar. From the Dollar Tree, okay? Just use chalk. Uh, what's, I got some color chalk. <laughs> I got a bunch of chalk. Uh, extra needles and things. Where is my, a rubber band? Okay, let's see. Let's go on around. Let's move on. I have more markers in here. Now, these are not, um, these are like pattern markers. When I'm tra transferring, tracing a pattern piece off, this is like bold, uh, to put my, my the name of my pattern, like Simplicity or McCall's, my pattern number, my size, center front, center back, right back, right front, you know, whatever, shorts, okay, the view, whether it's A, B, C, or D, okay, a bold marker. I'm so short, y'all. I can't get this chair up to where I can see. I got that. I cannot figure out. Okay, I'm gonna show y'all my little drawer. I don't know if you can see it or not. Let me tilt you down here. See my little drawer that comes out? Ha, 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 ha. Look at that. Yeah, it comes with a drawer. Not just pockets. It comes with a drawer. Okay, so this is where I have some extra sewing stuff. I got some more brushes just quickly so I can get to clean my serger. A thimble. Should have had this on bow making the other day. I've put, put so many needle holes in my fingers. Another little small brush. This is some of the accessories that's going to come with your sewing machine. Screwdrivers, okay? Um, extra needles. You may have some that's going to come with your machine. Extra needles, okay? There's a difference in needle sizes. Some are going to be for lightweight fabrics, some for medium weight fabrics, and then you've got your denim and leather, okay? Uh, let's see. Every, need, every single needle might come, well, not every single needle, blah, a lot of sewing machines are going to come with a double needle. I need to know how to use this. See, I don't know how to use this yet. Uh, let's see, tweezers for my serger to get in there to uh, pull that thread through that I can't reach in through there. So I have extra tools in here that I need for my sewing machine. All right, mm -hmm. and a nifty little drawer. But I can't zip it all the way because I got hot glue right there. But my drawer doesn't fall out. So, okay, now going on, this is some serging tools that I use. This is a threader because I have one. It's either my upper looper or my lower looper that is really hard to reach and get in there. And this is just the perfect angle. Go find you some tools like this, like from Walmart or Dollar Tree. You can't see me. <laughs> Dollar Tree or Walmart. <laughs> and um, get you some of these for your sewing essentials and the craft section uh, for your sewing machines, especially a serger. This is like a push fabric um, to keep you, if you've got to, um, if you've got a fabric that is bulky and it's having trouble going up under your needle or your throat plate or your, or your foot and you're having trouble and you really don't want to sew over your finger and, or prick yourself with a needle, you, this is a push fabric and you just kind of guide your fabric through there and you won't sew over your finger. This one... Hmm, this is a push one too, and it, I think this one might be, if y'all know what this one is for, um, might be for leather or something, heavier fabrics. Oh, this one, I used this one for something the other day, and it helped. Oh, y'all, I have several of these. These are seam rippers. <laughs> I told y'all I had several of these. <laughs> yeah, I got four seam rippers, y'all. Little ones, big ones, because I make mistakes, okay? 
Now, let's say this is another brush that I use to clean, but it just won't fit in here to be. This is liquid adhesive. I use this sometimes for some craft projects. There's that little thing. I'm going to put it back in its pocket over here. There's that little thing. This is a little hem gauge. It's in a little square. See? It's got your different sizes, one and three quarters, five eighths, your seam allowances. One and a half, half, three eighths, one eighth, two inches, one and five eighths, one quarter. This is like your seam allowances. So if you're not for sure, you know, and you can't eyeball it, there's a two inch seam allowance right there. Five eighths inch, five eighths inch seam allowance is gonna be on a lot of your patterns. So here's your five eighths inch seam allowance if you're not for sure, okay? I'm gonna put this back in its pocket where it goes. I need that. Uh, let's see, there's my embroidery little scissors. I think that's all, oh, I, let's see, let's go to the back. There's my fabric scissors. I'm gonna lock these babies up. What else have I got down in here? Uh, I've even got washable markers in here, y'all, in case I ever needed them. Y'all, I think that's all the pockets I got. Is there anything in here? I didn't check that pocket. Okay, so I hide them in the back to keep people out of them. But y'all, that is like my notions. Um, there, I have more notions, y'all. Um, but I, no, I don't because I did bring my box in. Okay, um, that's pretty much all my notions that I have. Just like I said, if you decide that you want to get started, start out small, buy you some things, little at a time, start out with your notions, research your machines, find which one fits you. You don't have to have a serger. You can do an overlock stitch on your, on your um, sewing machine, but I would get one that has a double needle. Okay? It just gives you more bells and whistles. You don't have to get a computerized one. There are so many machines on the market right now. And y'all, hey, I've been seeing a bunch of sewing machines at thrift stores, yard sales. Start out small, y'all, and practice on it. And then if you feel like you're ready to upgrade, upgrade. Get you another one, okay? Um, I'm probably not going to do a tour of my sewing machine room right now at home because, um... After our kitchen renovation, that is the next room that's getting renovated because right now it's full of stuff, okay? Where my sewing machine cabinets and my nook is, is inside the playroom for the grandkids and I share it. They get half the room and I get half the room. They can play while I'm sewing, which that's never happened because when I'm sewing, they're like, I got one on this side, one on this side. And then I got one wanting to get in my lap, one wanting to get on the other leg. So I'm like, uh, y'all, I can't sew with y'all on my legs, okay? And they're like, let's go play Gmo. So Gmo has to put down what she's doing and go play or read or have a tea party or we gotta be cooking or baking something in the kitchen. They gotta be where I'm at, okay? So a lot of times I don't get to sew when they're with me. So when I go somewhere, I haul up my sewing stuff and that's my quiet time to sew, okay? My granddaughters has gotta have all my time, okay? So, and then there's been times I've set them on my lap and they've watched me sew something, simple. And, and I'm starting out to teach them. I set them down one day with a little plastic crochet needle and some yarn and some felt fabric and just let them practice sewing, giving them some home ec skills. And they were like three and four. Three and four, they're getting good at it. And then uh, they want to work their way up to a needle and thread. But I'm like, let's stick to the plastic needle right now. I don't want them poking their fingers right now. Uh, let's see. Um, what else did, did I have fixed up for them to do? Practicing cutting. Okay. Practicing cutting. Um, and they've watched me. I, let's see, I gave them some clips one day with some scrap material, the little binder clips, and showed them how to clip some things and make their little seams and stuff like that. You know, I'm teaching them gradually a little at a time. And when they when they get a little older, I'll start teaching them a little bit of what I know about crochet. But, um, you know, things that the older generations used to do, nobody does anymore. Nobody hardly sews anymore. Nobody hardly crochets anymore. And I hate to see Afghans and doilies 
pot holders and stuff like that that's been crocheted. Oh, y'all, I hate to see them in thrift stores. I'd love to buy every single one of them because I know of all people the work that has gone into those things, sitting and crocheting. And Oh, y'all, I was crocheting one of my granddaughters a baby blanket one time. And our youngest son was in karate. And I would go and sit in class and before my granddaughter was born. And I would sit in class and I would just crochet and crochet and crochet. I had two hours in class to sit and crochet, y'all. And one time I got like an eighth done. <laughs> and I forgot what stitch I was on and what line I was on. And it started getting crooked because I got off somehow. Y'all, I had to sit in class and unravel that blanket and start back at line three, I think. I was so mad at myself. I know the time that goes into crocheted things. What is that they make doilies out of? T tack it? What's it called? Somebody put it in the comments what it's called. Them itty bitty bitty needles and the thread. And they're making those little doilies. They're not crocheted. What is that called, y'all? Tack starts with a T. Somebody put it in the comments because that's bugging me now. I can't stand it when I can't think of the name of something. So somebody put it in the comments, okay? Um, I want to tat tatting. Is that it? Did I think of it? Tatting, not tattling. Tatting. Somebody put it in the comments, okay? I want to know what that is. Somebody took the time to do that, y'all. Homemade projects are the best. I'd rather have a homemade gift any day, okay? And at something like that sewn or crocheted. I love things like that. Um, I know the time that's put into it. If you want to get started, start out small. Don't go into debt buying all this stuff first. Go to the Dollar Tree, look in their craft supplies, then go to Dollar General, work your dollar amount up, um, then Walmart, then Hobby Lobby, online, Amazon. We didn't have Amazon when I started out. Um, Joann's, Michael's, um, then research your machines. Find one that fits you. If you can get both, get both. If you can't, get the, get the uh, one that's capable, double needle capable. Get it and start out with it. Learn it. Read your owner's manuals. Please read your owner's manuals before you start playing around with it. You don't want to get your machine. Start out trying to teach yourself how to sew and you're not familiar with your machine yet. They have features that you can learn. But... If you're in the middle of a sewing project and something happens and you, you break a needle and you don't know how to change it or your thread keeps constantly breaking and you don't know what's going on, get your owner's manual out. Read it before you get started. I should have done that with mine. Um, sign up for some classes. Grab that friend that knows how to sew. Y'all, the older generation is still packed full of information and we're losing them. Let's learn how to do some things and, and, and a hobby for ourselves or get back to doing some things for ourselves. I, I love to sew just for a hobby. I do not sew for the public. I, I'm, I'm intimidated sewing for the public. This is just for my family. I have made my husband some button-up dress shirts. I've made my daddy some. I've made my boys some when they were growing up. I've made pajama bottoms, little shorts, pajama shorts. Now, now oh, y'all, if I would have had grand, if I would have had girls first, I would have gone into debt sewing for my little girl children. <laughs> I would have, y'all, because I'm on my way there now sewing for my granddaughters. My husband's like, what did you buy today at Hobby Lobby? Um, can I show you when it's finished? You'll love it. I promise you will. <laughs> okay. He has to trust me on some situations, y'all, like these little shorts here. Mm, y'all. He has to trust me. So, if we would have had girls first, oh my gosh, I would have went in debt sewing for them. But I did sew my boys some things, okay? And I sewed my husband some things. And I've, I've done some bags out of placemats. I, go and look at one of my videos. Um, it was, um, I think I, I'm, I combined it with a hotel cooking video. 
Ah, oh, gosh, I don't remember the name of it. And I was sewing some projects there. Go and look at that one, and I show you some projects I was doing. And I give you another thing of my machines. And I show y'all some projects that I did. I just don't remember what video it's on, y'all. If I go back and I find it, I'll link it in, in the description box below. If not, scroll back down through my videos, and it's on there somewhere, I promise. Uh, it's combined with a, a cooking video. I think while something was cooking, I showed y'all some of my, my projects I was working on. Um, but that's about it, y'all. Just find somebody and say, hey, can you teach me? Sign up for some classes. Sometimes there's some free classes. Library. Library has books. There's DVDs out there that you can buy. There's classes that you can take online. Um, it's so easy. National Sewing Circle. There's some DVDs that you can buy. Look on Amazon, sewing DVDs, um, beginner sewing DVDs, YouTube, uh, free videos. Y'all, you can learn how to sew anything, okay? Um, but that's about the gist of it. This is part one of this video. Part two is dealing with patterns and tracing off and cutting out your patterns. Uh, number three is probably going to be showing you I'm fixing to cut out my, lay out my pattern pieces that I traced off and cut out my fabric and then show you how to mark your fabric. And I'm going to use some of these and then pin, you know, lay out your fabric and then I'll cut it out. I'm not going to show you how to sew the garment because I'll probably mess up and yeah, I, but I will show you the finished product though. So y'all, if you want to get started sewing, this is for beginners. Just do your research, y'all. Start out small. I hope you you like you like the journey of sewing and you want to get started and find somebody to help you. It's really enjoyable, y'all. And uh, you, you give it to somebody, and, and I'm sure they're gonna love it. Um, but I hope you found this helpful. Uh, like I said, Amazon find a lot of your products. Uh, and oh, oh, I need to get back to telling you. I'm probably you're probably not gonna get a uh, tour of my sewing room. Like I was saying, I chased a rabbit. I'm sorry because <laughs> that room is a, is an attachment to our kitchen. It's gonna be an overflow. So, um. Everything's just kind of piled in there right now. And everything's on top of my sewing cabinets. My husband bought some cabinets, built me a table, fixed them up on the wall for me, and that became my sewing area. And I share it with my granddaughters. Uh, and they play. They're supposed to be playing while I sew, but they wind up in my lap somehow. So, but that room is going to get renovated too, and it's probably going to be the next room. And I'm going to actually move my sewing nook to the other side of the room. But like I said, right now, I'm gonna, everything is piled in there, so I can't show you what it looks like right now. Maybe after I get everything fixed up and we get that room all fixed up, I'll give you a tour of my sewing stuff and my crocheting stuff. Um, I'll, I'll give you a tour of that. Just don't let me forget. I might have to write it down in my upcoming videos um, when we get that room renovated. So I'm, can't show you that right now. So I hope y'all will get intrigued over the journey of starting to learn how to sew. And I hope you get into it and you enjoy doing it and you make tons of things. And when you do, um, if you remember this video, come back and show me some things that you've made. Uh, so I hope this has been informative for y'all and I hope it helps. I'm going to get busy starting to cut out this next one and start to filming it. So, y'all hang in there. These videos are coming. Thanks.